when people see my work initially, they go, oh, that's fun. And then they look longer and they're like, wait a minute, maybe it's not as fun as you think it is as you, as you get closer. And for me, it's, I'm always surprised when people say it's fun. It's, when I look at it, it looks dark to me. It, uh, it's full of anxiety. It's full of spiritual dread in a way. Uh, the, the same kind of spiritual dread that I would imagine having from a Bruegel painting where it's complicated and dark and the world is moving in ways that you don't understand necessarily and there seems to be a lot of violence and a lot of greed and, and your own appetites are contributing to all of this and so you're very much in the cycle of it. Uh, and so I think I have all of those feelings and all of this anxiety and then because of who I am, I guess, I just run it through this kind of very clean decorative filter that, that takes everything and tidies it up. It gets very clean and very tight, and at the same time, it's sort of all of that worry and fear and dread is sort of squeezing out at the edges and comes out in the subject matter. The plan, but it always changes in reality, but the, the plan is that she's gonna get pulled out when this is all done and a stencil will be left in the paint background of her silhouette, which is why things are a little dense around her at this moment. I'm hoping that that will balance when she comes, when she's gone. And uh, I think the piece is gonna be called The Price of Doing Business, and then parentheses, You Wish. Or it may just be called You Wish, I'm not sure, but the, that you could sort of absent yourself from all of this craziness would be, it's something you, you might hope for, but, but you can't. Um, so there's a sort of, a, it's like a wish fulfillment that you, you would like to not be here, but, but you're part and parcel of the whole tsunami of experience. The material is not precious. Uh, and the individual pieces then aren't precious particularly. And that allows me to be very free with repetition and also to work directly on the pieces so I can cut them and paste them and put them back together and you know not be uh, not have to feel like I have to hold on to each one the process is not hard so at the moment you can sort of you can improvise and feel like this is fine these are just raw materials initially I had a lot of reluctance like making art out of plastic feels like what are we doing here you know what I mean like it's plastic it's it's crap but it works. It works for what it is, and I, I, I've really come to appreciate its disposable, sort of not fine art quality. It will be here till we're all long dead. You know, it's not going anywhere. And, and you can do amazing things with it. You know, you can stretch it out and have these long, thin lines that support themselves. You could just never, never do that with something else. All the big pieces have been put in, and now I'm just filling in the gaps with the smaller pieces that... Uh, that just become the kind of flotsam and jetsam of, of the world all around. Although it still changes at this moment. You know, I might, something might suggest something else and then pieces have to move around. There you go. So there he goes. And these guys were sort of always intended to, they were designed so that they could, they could grab guys, be pulling them one way or the other, grabbing them in all kinds of different directions. But I really like the, the modeling. I like being a sculptor in that regard. So I, I wanted to do something where I could really invest in the, in the modeling of it and the sculpting. So the, the previous piece is a figure. He's got a helmet for a head. He's wearing a pelt and he's got a bow and arrow and he's wearing jeans and flip-flops and it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of different references all happening at the same moment and so you can't really locate him in one place or another. He's not, nothing about it gives you a place to place him exactly. You know, he's medieval, he's ancient, he's contemporary, he's all these things. She is a fencer. Uh, it's from an image I found online that I've modified somewhat. The image struck me because she's, she looks so tough. And she has such a great moment in the photograph and I hope in the sculpture of this sort of extremely tough readiness. Like, she's not active, she's just sort of waiting for the next challenger. And now the clay that's happening now is the sort of second part, and it's going to be this incredibly intricate, gothic framework that will be happening. And inside of there will be birds and animals 
roving through and so it'll be this almost sort of very stylized scene of the wilds. Through one process and another, this, these have emerged as a way to sort of take relief into a contemporary context and I just like that, I like that whole genre, I want to get back to it. <laughs>